Yeah, and the mic is better. Do I need the mic? Do I need the mic? Yeah. Oh, it's crap. No, because I cannot move and need to talk to walk when I speak, so that's going to be weird. Anyway, hi. Uh, so you're going to be with me to the end because I hijacked the handle session. I, as I submitted two talks and asked them to be the two at the same time. Um, I'm just switching off. Oh, sure. Uh, so I don't know if you know that, but I'm going to talk about company and pay editing. So. Yeah, I'm going to do some trolling because I think we're not tackling the issue and I'm going to try to explain first why I believe it's important for us to tackle that issue and to work on it and to build things around that on a strategical standpoint and second I'm going to try to provide um, first answers to how to do that and the thing is how to do that is to, uh, will need community involvement and that's going to be the hard part in the end. So, the first one is how could company help reach our strategy goal? Um, so I'm Christophe Henner, I'm uh, French, I'm a board member, but that's not relevant. I'm also, uh, until three or four months ago, I was a consultant in marketing and communication for big companies, so this is an issue that they bring to me. So it's, I made a talk in IFA, I know if some of you, was anyone in IFA at my talk about companies? I don't think so. Uh, I made a talk in New York, 2010 or 11 about that, okay. Yeah, oh, there was one person, yeah. Uh, so I worked with uh, Orange and a big pharmaceutical company and so on, and one day they learned that I was a Wikimedian and they said, hey, could you do something? And I said, hey, I can't. Um, because right now we are, we are not fit for the needs of companies, and I would go from of that a little after, but we are not fit for companies, so I started to think of what we could do. So first of all, I need to go back a little in time, so I have notes. Um, um, when we started Wikipedia and until pretty late, we were a startup type. I mean, we were trained a lot of things, we were, we were daring, we were taking risks. And at some point, we became a big organization. And uh, you can see we have really few new projects, and the few projects we have are highly yeah, supported by the foundation, but by the community. And um, when uh, the company started editing, I think it was around 2006, 2007, we had the first case of, it, of companies editing Wikipedia. Uh, we shut them down because they weren't doing it according by our rules. The media shut them down. And so you have companies that either stopped to do that or did that under the hood. And it's still going on. Because if, you, if people believe, and I won't say names, but some people believe that if we say to company, do not edit, they won't, which is nonsense. They will edit under the hood. And they do, and they really do. Um, so yeah, 2007, we are blocked to that. And here, five, six years later, Wikimedia are still, uh, I believe, like, afraid of companies stepping in Wikipedia and starting to edit it because there is a conflict interest, because there is paid editing and that's bad. And that, that is so bad that we actually are doing paid editing already. Um, so this is a trolling part. Uh, people are against paid editing unless it's from people we like. Uh, when we go to Glam's and say, hey, how are you? It would be so awesome if you hired someone to uh, up the, uh, upload thousands of pictures and comments and improve your articles on Wikipedia. That's great. So the guy is paid to improve articles and upload content about his company, which is a museum. Okay, but it's still a company or an organization. And it's okay. But if we go to a big company like Orange and go to them and say, hey, you have uh, archives dating for 100th century, upload that in comments and improve your article and get some people to do that and be paid. It's exactly the same thing, but it's not okay. They're company, they're bad. Um, and so this is kind of the situation we are in right now, is on one hand, we have the people that we like, that are cultural organizations, and we let them and we encourage them to do bad editing. And then there is all the others, and not only companies, but even third parties company, a third party organization that we don't want to edit, and not bad editing. 
Um, so yeah, that's the kind of situation we're in, and uh, I tried for quite some time to talk with, well, at least, I don't know, if uh, people are on ComCom here, you know? We had a huge talk with Jimmy uh, on ComCom about pad editing, which was shut down because pad editing, pad editing is bad. Yes, but why? Because it is bad. And it is bad. They are not going to go by our rules, which is not true. Um, so, yeah. So, here we are. Um, as I have no slides, if you have any questions or if you want to just shoot questions, please do. I mean, it's going to be much more lively, and as I have to go for 40 minutes, it's going to be much easier for me. Yes? So, yeah, so one of the first concerns people have about companies using Wikipedia is that they want to look good on Wikipedia. That is so 2007. People, uh, people, Wikipedia thinks that companies want to look good on Wikipedia, and that's so 2007. Um, 2007, I mean, that was six years ago. It's not real today. It's not the case today. When you talk with a CMO or a, a head of communication of a company, he knows, he understands that he cannot do anything he wants on Wikipedia. He read the press, he read the media, and he saw uh, Dell or IBM or Microsoft or uh, pharmaceutical companies getting shut down by media trying to edit and make them look good. So they know they can do that. And, uh, yeah? No, they want them to be updated. So, uh, in IFA, what, what I presented was a study I made about the 40 biggest companies in France and the quality of their articles. And the best article was, if we go by the um, article of quality criteria, we didn't go anywhere close to that. It was mostly a stir. All the information were outdated by two years at least. There was no governance information, no information, uh, financial information. There was no information about the company were uh, do apart from selling some products or services and company do a lot of things. And so you have companies right now don't want to do good on Wikipedia. They want at least to have the article updated. They want to have the last financial information. They want to have the logo correct. They want to have the right CEO's name. I worked with a financial company, I'm still working with them, and he came to me and said, hey, did you know that the name, the title of all of C levels on the Wikipedia page is not correct and has never been correct? And so we have a situation where we don't want companies to edit their own article or even edit Wikipedia at all, but nobody is. Nobody is updating the article and we have a gap in policy there, there and it's been so, yes, yeah, so as I said, pedicting is not the issue. I mean, yes, it is the issue in the perception of people, but it is not because we are really all uh, allowing it. And so, um, I try to convince people that we are already uh, making, doing paid editing with clams, and obviously, uh, it didn't catch because it's clams, it's different. They're cool people, they're nice people, they're cultural people. Yes, see. So, I. Uh, like language projects take different approaches to paid editing. Can you talk a little bit about like? So from what I, from where I stand, and I'm sorry, I don't speak all the 250 languages, but uh, mostly English, French, German, Spanish. I can see uh, stands pretty much all the same. Uh, when they have a hint of paid editing, uh, it's just shut down. I mean, that is the supposition, and I go. I have examples where it worked, uh, but uh, especially in the English Wikipedia, where the rules are made so. Uh, the companies can't edit. Uh, for example, real quick, that is, a, I think it's global rule now. Uh, a username for an account must be related to one person and not to a moral person. And this is a big issue for a company because they, it's not because of identification or anything, anything, it's just because of responsibility. They want it to be their responsibility and not the employee's responsibility. They don't want an employee to come back four years ago. Two days after I've been, I've, been fire, uh, I've been being fired and just trash everything and being on them. So they want one single account that is certified is them. Um, and that we can do. Well, yeah, uh, uh, Darius and then still. Well, technically, I think people have it. It's not the companies that have it. And the multiple people accounts are frowned upon on many Wikipedia. So this is one issue with this particular yeah. policy. It's another very conflict of interest resolution. Different. 
edited articles about yourself, not with coaching, but on many videos you can. So I'm wondering, you know, whether you have this conflict of interest uh, solution proposal, like to. So uh, do you really believe that among Wikipedia there is no conflict of interest? There is one, and I, I'm, I'm asking you whether there could be a solution in which conflict of interest policy uh, sort of addresses the issues that we're discussing. So the thing is, uh, do we need conflict of interest policies? We don't. I mean, actually, we don't. We have a lot of rules um, that, especially the one you have to give citations. Either you have conflict of interest or not, you, can say, you cannot say what you want. You need to back it up. So even if I work for, I, I, mean, I work for my company and they have an article on Wikipedia, which I didn't edit, you can check. Um, but uh, if I go to edit it, I will have to provide citations. Well, but it's, but come on, come on, we're going to say, it's only about adding information. So of course, for any information added as a resource, yeah. the, the only editor who edits an article about the company is, is interested in the in yeah. fact that the article is really good. They will not add any controversial information whatsoever. And if, if there are no other editors involved, the so, article will be a shining uh, foundation. So, and that's my point is, it's actually happening like that under the rule. But if you go the other way around and you welcome companies and you make them, you see that they are editing the articles, you will see that Orange is editing its own article, and then you have Wikipedians saying, hey, there is a problem with conflict of interest. Perhaps they will not do it okay, but they will. Let's check that out. But at least we know that. We know that it's happening. It's right? Open. Yeah, open. Because for companies, it's better for them because they can actually valorize that. They can communicate. I mean, they can come and say, hey, we are the good people. We improve the free knowledge about our company, our field of expertise. They got that, but if you do have that in the hood, they actually are doing that. I mean, I have, I'm following most, I'm following the most of the article of the big company article in French, and I see that. And I mean, I, I really see the edits, and I'm just like, nice. But it's so obvious. But nobody is, nobody else is uh, looking at that because they don't think there is a reason. So a requirement to state in the name that somebody is yes. a company. So I go to, uh, I go to that um, the next part, which is how we do that. But yes, this is key to. I think I think it's yeah. How about setting up a new class of users like So I have, and they do not work on our rules, and they work with the rules, and I go to that. It remind me, like, in, when I finish the strategic part, and I go to the framework, but I have a really good example. Yeah. Then, uh, yes. Yeah. And, uh, don't you see the problem uh, in this imbalance of power between those big companies that have uh, PR and the full-time, the full-paid people yeah. that have a lot of time? Yes. And here the community non of non-professionals that do not have the access to uh, to all those documents and information to build the articles. And the people that are paid to do articles, they can just uh, look for more backing information for the references. They, they, it's uh, more uh, to, to, to see the, mm -hmm. the, uh, the companies in a, in a, in a positive way. Mm -hmm. While on the other side, you have the, the community that don't have the, the access to all those so, things. Um, for example, just for, a question. For example, has, has you never seen that happen for political parties, where you have people that are deeply involved within this political party and sometimes even paid? Well, but but you have it already happens. And international you, corporations are international. For example, yeah. there's a big discussion about some uh, companies uh, what they are doing in Africa. For example, the Shell, uh, Shell company. Yeah. They have the, the access to people that know the local languages. For example, they can put the references in local uh, to, the, to the papers in the local mm -hmm. languages. There are hard, hardly any editors 
that, that can check that. But yeah. they already do that, uh, but not yeah. from the marked account. The, the thing is, yeah. if they want to do, I mean, my point is, how we do to improve the situation? What you are describing is something that can already happen. So I don't care. It's already happening, so that means I can, I can improve that situation. But we, we must not be oblivious. I mean, it's happening. No, it's okay. I mean, I, I did not make any slides because I know this is a topic I want to us to, disc, to talk about. So that's why I made really little slides. I have food points I have to go through, but it's really little. And the goal was really to talk. So I can move. Okay, I take like two questions and fight among each other which ones you want me to answer. Yeah, okay, whoever you want. The first two will talk. Uh, okay. 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 Um, so I, I do apologize I was not here. I actually watched the stream upstairs. But I am curious, I presume, since this is a paid editing discussion, and I do realize that I'm coming at this from an angle where in I was one of the persons where um, you know, Wikipedia Philippines nearly got involved in the big scandal over Tony Ahn and company. Mm -hmm. I presume you know the instance where Jimmy repudiated Tony Ahn, he's an American living in the Philippines, who runs a PR company, um, wherein one of the things that this PR company does is write Wikipedia articles for their clients. Yes. One, of the one of the services that they supposedly provide, but actually they don't promise it, is that they're going to make sure that this article gets to um, becomes a DYK. And in fact, I was involved in one of those DYKs. Um, so, you know, helping out with the article and everything. But what I would like to ask you, Christoph, is whether, you know, you think the, you know, the Tony model is something that is viable for Wikipedia, you know, making sure that, you know, I'm open with all of my conflicts of interest, that I make sure that I do not actively involve myself in these conflicts uh, in these conflicts of interest and whether this is something that other PR practitioners ought to mock to emulate. So I go back to that uh, that to that to the framework. But yes, I mean we will have to go that way actually. Uh, I will explain a little more on that, but it's mostly what we will some way have to do. Because uh, if you want companies to participate, and yes, they are clueless about Wikipedia. It's not that they want to do bad, it's just that they don't, want, they don't know how to do. So they have to be trained, and it doesn't scale. There is so much company, and they have money, they can pay for that. So we have to find a way to train them, and that has to scale, because there are thousands of companies in the world. Uh, yeah, and okay, the last two, and then I move on. I want to bring another approach from another perspective this discussion uh, by telling a short story. A few months ago, I was approached by the what's called new media company of uh, the biggest uh, uh, health uh, service in, in our country, who found out by, by chance that I'm the most active editor in their article, and uh, they offered me payment for approving, uh, for, for improving their article and enhancing it. I totally refused it and I explained why. But uh, at the same time, I asked them, you know, uh, your article is quite short and we need uh, lots of information. You have like a hundred years of history. You can bring us new pictures and then uh, you can. And uh, they also asked to change their logo. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, at the same time. Okay, but we made some kind of an agreement. I mean, I wasn't, uh, uh, I, I refused be paid in order not to be enforced later on to, to change things according to their own opinion. Um, and there was also one uh, link for, for like a survey that gave them like a very uh, better result. And I, I, I told them that it really remained in the article because everyone can edit or, and, and it's fine. Yes. They, they may bring another survey as a link, but it's fine. But what I want to, to, to emphasize is that Sometimes, if, if an existing editor can get to this challenge of, of, of being involved in a connection with this company, as long as it's not getting paid and, and, it, and it's like the moderator of the information getting in, yeah. we can achieve a lot. I mean, yes. um, the, they eventually, what, 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 what went on is me asking them, look for these kind of pictures we need, and, and um, I didn't have much time to add some information they wanted to add, so they added it, and I edited it later on, and deleted some information they wanted to add, but I, I, I assumed that it, it wasn't right to add, like, saying to, to, 
think too many uh, sentences out, out great are their mobile apps or, or their site. And I said it's enough to, to mention that you have this mobile app and the site. Um, so what, what, what I, I think is that it might be a bit like a glam. If you have someone working with us from this entity, um, I don't mind that the other one is getting paid for, for, for handling this connection with me. Um, as long as it gives us the, the details we need and the information, yeah. this might be a good solution. Because on one hand, on one side, there's an, a Wikipedia editor who knows what to do and, and how to check what's good and what's yeah. better to make the balance. And on the other hand, we have a coordinator working with us and bringing this, all this information. This is like the solution for what you say. And, and I'm curious, that, I mean, you, you, you yourself used to work in a PR company. So how come you uh, didn't uh, uh, ask someone to bring you information to improve existing <coughs> articles? I mean, even as a, as a PR person, you, you could do it. I mean, you could what? You could do it. I mean, you could yeah, get I could. information. Perhaps I, perhaps I had, but I don't know who. And that's the point. I don't do it. Okay. Perhaps, or perhaps not. Okay. Maybe, okay. who knows, eventually. Yes, last question and then I move on. Uh, yeah. yeah, yes, first. Sorry. Um, it's not really a question. I just want to share an example of um, a good contribution from companies. Um, it's not a personal experience, but I see them quite a lot in comments. Um, this is one of the largest companies in the world called LG. And they have a Flickr account uh, licensed to CC BY. And all their pictures are accessible and um, very frequently uploaded to comments, and a lot of articles are illustrated uh, by these uh, pictures. So it's not impossible to involve companies in a very good way, and we shouldn't refuse the possibility of uh, working together with companies because they can uh, contribute um, in a meaningful way. Yes, so that is great. It makes great transition for this part of our strategy. It's uh, we have to find like five point, five key uh, strategic um, point for the next uh, 2015, which is uh, improve the infrastructure, um, yeah, participation, quality, reach, and innovation. And this is the five key uh, strategic things that came, uh, came out of the uh, strategic plan. And if you look at companies, they can help us solve the five points. They can bring something at the table about the five things. Uh, infrastructure. I mean, you can work with a lot of companies that can improve can try and benefit, or uh, it's what we do with Wikipedia Zero, actually. I, actually, it's this is kind of country where a company is able to provide us a mean to reach our goal. Uh, and then you have, uh, we, we have an issue in increasing participation. I mean, if you outreach to a huge company that has 10,000 employees, and you provide them, and you make, you know, you provide them um, training sessions, you provide them training materials, they reach at one time, they can reach 10,000 people. And we are talking about impact, about efficiency. I mean, you reach out to your CMO or, or head of communication of company, you talk to them perhaps three hours, two, uh, two or three times, three hours, you convince them and you tell them, yeah, you can just forward that to your employees and tell them. In one, in one shot, you, you um, pro promote Wikipedia to 10,000 people. It's much more efficient than any uh, wiki conference where you will have 30 person, person showing up with 10 Wikipedians, 10 boyfriends, girlfriends, parents of Wikipedians, and 10 new people. It's a much larger scale. Companies are, 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 are social hubs where that we can use, actually. And we want to improve quality. And um, so in Haifa, I made this study and, uh, about the quality of articles of the 30 biggest company, French company. And I had the curiosity to look at what were the global R&D uh, budget, and it was over 10 billion of euros. So if you really successfully convince to get like 0.001% of that, it represents thousands of hours of time of researchers. Because when they, when big companies that have R&D, they are hiring PhD engineers that are experts in that field, that are really knowledgeable of that field, and that at some point could help us. Perhaps not even by editing, but just by saying, hey, if you have any question about, uh, I don't know, uh, chemistry, just send us an email and we will help you find the references. And they're not even editing. I mean, it's not even editing, it's just providing support. 
And the company, what's inter the interest for her in that, for them in that, is A, we're supporting free knowledge. And in the end, for them, it's nothing. It's like 0.001% of our in the budget. But they can do that. Um, and, well, I talked about reach, so it's the same as population. I mean, we can reach out to a lot of people at the same time. I mean, imagine if tomorrow Microsoft set up a program that uh, they authorize uh, employees to train for off day uh, at editing Wikipedia. We reach out, reach out at hundreds of thousands of employees at the same time. And the thing is, Wikipedians are already in those companies because I believe we all have day jobs. We all are getting money to f pay food. So you can even find, try to find people in those companies to work with the company to build up the participation within the company. And it's pretty much the same as we do in college and in universities. We find Wikipedians that try to organization to train each other. It's much the same, but it's a company. Okay, they make money, but no different there. And then innovation, and the thing is, just thinking about companies helping us is you know, quite innovative for us because we ruled that out six years ago, and it's not a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I, just, I think that uh, if there's transparency about, about the editor, that, uh, that, that really goes a long way. And I just to answer Thomas' uh, concern about the, uh, this sort of editor having too much uh, influence over the, the, the neutrality of articles uh, because of their sophistication and their resources and this type of thing. I, I don't think that's, in my experience, I just, I don't think that's made, made out when it's totally disclosed who they are because that sort of editor is treated very hot, he basically has a very hostile environment in Wikipedia. Uh, just to, to when I, uh, during the Republican uh, presidential campaign, uh, Newt Gingrich's communications manager uh, arrived on Wikipedia, and uh, but he disclosed his identity from the beginning. I said, I explained to him how he could actually write that into his signature that he was the Newt 2012 communications manager. And he never, I suggested, just make your suggestions on the talks page, uh, don't edit the article directly. But even then, even though he just made suggestions on the talks page, there was a great, people would go to Jimbo, they would go to admins, they're just like, we gotta get this guy off of here, he's got a conflict of interest. And I mean, these people, they'll be, they're gonna face a hostile environment and the community will treat, if it's clearly indicated what the, who, where that's coming from, it's gonna be treated very skeptically. The only reason why, this guy had any influence at all because nobody could come up with, a, with an argument for why the, his suggestions for improvement wasn't entirely legitimate on its own face. So that wasn't the English Wikipedia? This was on the English So Wikipedia. I guess the French Wikipedia is much more mature than the English one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to explain why I say that. So uh, a few months ago, I think it was one year, on, a year, a year ago, um, there was on the orange article on the French Wikipedia and on the English Wikipedia actually, there was huge changes. Like a lot of new information added about uh, what uh, the company do outside of selling uh, ISP and telco services, uh, the partnerships, uh, the internal organization, the business units, and so on. And this was, the article went from a two pages article to a 14 or 30 pages article. I mean, really huge changes. And then this went to the village firm. And somebody said, hey, something is going on. And then the account creative came and said, hi, I am working for Orange. I made those edits, and if you need me to change anything, I will work with you through that. And the article uh, contained uh, the change, added even citations for the um, uh, controversies of the company. So they even improved, they didn't change the content, they improved the citation for the controversies. What happened? So, French Wikipedians uh, rearranged the article, changed some things, but didn't revert that. And the reason, I believe the reason that uh, behind that is because they went all by the rules and they went even farther than what the rules are expecting from them and they disclosed from the beginning well, assist when they were asked who they were and what they were doing. And those edits were uh, translated and pushed, I think, two weeks later on, on the English Wikipedia and I think it remains. And that is really interesting, because this was kind of, for me, the middle ground, which is not what we must aim to, but the company did that in Otherwood until somebody asked, and then some people were like, yeah, if it's a company, we should worry about everything, and others was just like, they provided citations for everything. And they, 
even provided information, uh, citations for things that we didn't have and we wouldn't have found anyway. So yes, company has resources, but resources we can foster, we can use, we can exploit. Yeah, I mean, traditionally a sophisticated editor is someone who's knowledgeable and someone we want to welcome. Yeah. And uh, I'll just say we've already got systems in Wikipedia that, in a way, kind of are biased in favor of the people we consider less powerful. If, you, if, the, if you've got a personal biography on there, uh, you can use the OTRS system to basically, in secret, ask people with oversight powers to change your article in your favor, yeah. right? And uh, the way the oversight, so oversight process works, it's largely in the dark. We don't know, we don't see, can't see those OTRS tickets. But basically, more or less official policy is that we allow this to happen if the person is a private individual. But if you're a corporate, if you're a corporation, you've got to do everything you try, and you've got to do everything transparently. But even then, if you do everything transparently, you still got to run the gauntlet of so, the community that goes to, that complains to everybody. Well, this guy's a corporate editor. We can see yeah. it. It's in his so the thing is, trust was destroyed between. I say companies, but it's most even third-party organization, because I believe it could happen the same with any non-cultural organization, any time. Um, so trust has been destroyed, and rightfully so. I mean, in 2007, they were really trying to push forward their, their ideas. But six years later, things have changed. Uh, the way of communicating has changed. I mean, we are in the open communication. We were in green communication before that. Now we are in open communication, where people try, companies try to be as open as they can, which is not always off, but they try. Uh, and we have to rebuild that trust. So, and for that, we need to provide a framework. But we did that for, with GAM, which is the interesting thing is we provide to GAMS and for us a framework to work with GAMS. And if you look how uh, Wikimedians are working with GAMS all around the world, it's done exactly the same way. You approach them, you talk with them, you sit with them, you have lunch with them, and then you start to train them. And when you start to train them, then you try to talk about having a larger project, and then you talk about, hey, what about hiring someone? And th this is a process. I mean, this is really uh, a process to empower them, and to learn, teach them how to use this video, and that's something we need. And the, thing, the interesting thing is with GAMS, what we are interested in is content. They provide pictures of beautiful things. Okay. Uh, companies have the power and the resources to provide much more. As I said, they could provide even technical support. They could provide free access in some countries, and they already do. And the thing is, they but even but have... But problems shouldn't get uh, some, some benefits from the Wikipedia Zero in their article. No, they, they did not. They did not. They yeah, did but not. that's the point. I mean, companies are, I mean, uh, you're, uh, we believe, I mean, people believe, okay, so <coughs> marketing, so I'm kind of the evil guy. Um, but uh, people believe that companies' aims is always to look good. It's mostly true, but they don't. No, no, but yeah, but they don't always seek that profit directly. Wikipedia Zero is a huge benefit for Orange, huge, amazing, because when uh, Orange do Wikipedia Zero with uh, I know in Kenya, I don't know where, in Cameroon, you will have people to subscribe to Orange to get Wikipedia Zero. It's a benefit for them, but, but it serves our interest, and this is the point where you have to wait. But uh, it's not article related. I mean, no, it's not article related. And really little is the article already. I mean, uh, you have most of the big companies, especially the low old companies, so perhaps in the US like IBM, who have been around for a century, they are glams too. They have archives you cannot imagine. Uh, there is a um, French bank, which is two century old, that, really, that um, employs two curators for the HQ. They have an internal museum that only the employees of the HQ can see. And it's not because they want to hide it, because they don't can, they can't open a museum. And so we come, we actually talk to them. And what about putting that in Wikipedia? Yeah, why not? It didn't happen for many reasons, but yeah, they were okay because they don't care. It wasn't meant. It was they bought all those arts for fiscal reason. And they have curators to take care of that. But we can't accept that, and we can't enter into partnership with them because Wikimedians don't want to get involved with companies. And so, in some way, if I want to even troll a little more. By not wanting to cooperate with companies, we are killing free knowledge. Because there is a ton of archives of art that is owned by companies that we cannot reach out to. I so, saw two, yes. Yeah, so, well, I want to make a point about, uh, you know, working with GLAMs and working with universities and, and encouraging that sort of stuff. Because, like, the goal of the GLAM and the goal of the universities 
just to get the information. They don't have like a vested interest in how the information is presented. Oh, really? Whereas the yes, so, uh, so especially not if they're not. Okay. Excuse me. Yeah. So if they're not editing the article about themselves or or something like that, it's just about getting the information out there, and this is a this is a vector for that to happen. Whereas if we have a company, even if they're adding well sourced information, that opens up the question: Well, what are they adding that ought, might be equally well sourced? Okay, so quick question. Um, don't GLAMS and okay, you use GLAM universities, don't they have a budget and have to defend that budget every year based on what they did the previous year? Sure, and but they're not writing about that in Wikipedia. Wikipedia. A PhD candidate, we uh, we get the, we get to we contribute to Wikipedia, will not contribute to its field of research, which will promote <laughs> its field of research research, which perhaps will help him get a job. This is a conflict of interest, interest too. They have to. It's not as evident, it's not as natural for us to think of that as a conflict of interest. But it is um, uh, quite innocent to think that GLAMs don't take anything out of that. They don't do that just because they spread culture. Come on, it's not true. They do that because they get visibility, because they get perhaps even more people to come. And this is really true about the, I don't remember the um, German Archives partnership, which was one of the first things. You know, the first thing that they communicate on is how, much, how many people more came to visit the archives and how many more people bought the photos of the archives. And this is the very first GAM partnership. And this is the first press release they do after the partnership. Talk, talk to me about conflict of interest. GAMs have too. And it's okay. It for, it's okay as so long as it's managed at the center. And this is as long as we are aware of that. Yeah. Okay, so now two issues. Firstly, um, I'm with you that the GLAM has have the interest to bring yeah. people to themselves, but actually there's a huge difference between, I don't know, GLAMs and the RANGE. I mean, the GLAMs want you to, want you to give you some information or yeah. to give you just access to the public art, sure. and they don't want to sell you an annual plan on your mm -hmm. mobile. So I think that we all consider GLAMs and what they are doing as a, some kind of a public interest. And we don't really consider what the commercial entities are doing <coughs> as a public interest, at least not that much. Okay. So this is the, for me, so, you know, their ultimate goal of GLAM is quite in accordance with the ultimate goal, goal of, of Wikipedia. And the ultimate goal of commercial entities is not really in line with the ultimate goal of Wikipedia. So we can go just, I don't know, make two, three steps together, but not more. And this is my second issue. Where do you have the handbrake? Where is your emergency brake? Because PR and the co all the companies are doing PR. And PR is everything about giving you data, about giving you information. Companies love when you have information about them. They love it. But there is one thing. The information is filtered. There's, this is the thing that information is filtered. This is not really neutral point of view information. This is the filtered information. Uh, um, um, oh yes, it is. And uh, you have a problem like, uh, like, like producing drugs. Then you have ten trials, and only one of the trials is published. The that one that is really favorable with the company, and nine of them are not published. And this is the problem with the sources that you will get from the company. In many many circumstances, you will get only the sources that are favorable for the company, and you will not the sources, and you will not see the sources that are against the company because I'm, they will I'm not sorry, show it to you. Okay, I'm sure that I don't get that point because whether they edit or not, they will do that. So well, you, that's if, why if we are cutting them. What? That's why. So this is why we're cutting them all together. No, but you can't. I mean you No, can't. we can't. So no you can't. Oh we can? Okay, I'll okay, okay, so, okay, 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 I'm gonna source we, we can, can. We can. We can. Uh, we can because this is the eternal source of the company. But we don't so this is I'm training you. Come on. Because you see that this is the how? source published how? by the company. So how? You see that. How? How do you see that? Because this is an internal document. And why so would we would we accept it's internal documents as sources? Well, well, citation. well, it is citation, but this is everything about the criticism of the sources. So if it better, there is an entity which is self-depicting itself. So you, you like there was this question about who's from the Committee of Deutschland? Like the people, there was the question about the fraternities of Germ uh, in Germany, that the vast majority of sources are actually the fraternities in Germany. So they are actually describing themselves. So can we trust actually the sources when they are 
describing themselves. And there's always this thing in corporations that if you have audited financial statements, that probably it's okay. But when you go farther and farther, then there is this question of how much can I trust the sources? And this so is the very basic thing about writing any encyclopedia. So that's what peer review is for. I'm yeah. sorry. Yes, uh, peer so review. But peer review is for thousands and thousands of editors looking at these articles. Yeah. So if All right. there's a problem with the source, it's going yes. to, the issue is going to be raised. Uh, and, and your role as an editor is to bring that aside. If they so bring something the that is in their favor, bring that aside, and you can put it in the in the article. They want to raise it, and if they add, you may revert. So, okay. so can, can, can I suggest a way to shift the discussion here and uh, first off, first off, first because, because like, it's getting late. So, I give you your question right up because you raised your hand many times and you didn't have the answer the questions. So, uh, it's. Uh, 12.53, I mean, only uh, it should end in seven minutes, so what I suggest is I take it until 1.10, and if we want, we can grab lunch and reconvene here and keep on go, uh, go, talking about that about lunch, if you want. I know, if you want. And, okay, your question, I just finished with what I have to say myself, so I'm done. I've done my job, and then we can just talk. And I'll answer your first question about uh, uh, the goals of the cultural things and the companies and so on. First thing, I would uh, a bit agree that uh, yes, there definitely sometimes is some cherry picking where a company can uh, select the sources very well and just give you the impression that everything is like covered, but actually they are not, <coughs> very biased. But one thing that I see is overlooked is that uh, in most of the cases companies are not monopolists. Uh -huh. Companies have. Uh, Companies have some uh, competitors, other companies that are also, that, that they would also actually include into this. So that they can then sell us, actually check it out that their competitor doesn't have any. Yes. Because this would be actually the easiest way to make sure. Yeah. Because of them, companies, as I said, have resources and they definitely like to look. If they work together, media, and when they make sure that the competitor's company is not, uh, this information is not biased, then that's how you can solve this. So, totally agree. Uh, just to move on the framework, which was the second part, it was supposed to last 20 minutes, and I will do that in two, so it's going to be really quick. But um, the, what companies and third party organization needs mostly is to be trained, to be reassured, and to be have their head, uh, ends held at the beginning. Uh, and that today we cannot do. I mean, GLAMS organized themselves around chapters mostly and around user groups. And this is how they got, uh, we as Wikimedia went forward to GLAMS because we had the chapters backing up with some uh, legitimacy. And I believe that we can do that with companies because there's, then there is some kind of complicated things between uh, chapters being an NGO and, uh, and so on. The thing is, there is already a lot of people that are willing or even are doing, and we saw that they are doing the, uh, services for companies. We saw that in the UK with Monmouthpedia, which was big first because it was for a member, blah, 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 but it was a really good idea. We had someone that really knows, knows really well Wikipedia, went with a third party organization, their CD, and helped them improve their article, which for them is good for tourism, and for Wikipedia is good because we improve free knowledge. And what is lacking for a company is this, is who is going to make them learn about us? Who is going to teach them that if they try to meddle with us, it's gonna back, the backdrop is going to be really hard, really harsh. And so I believe that as there are already people that are willing to make a living about teaching Wikipedia, let's organize that. Let's not do them that all the way around the world, under the wood again, and just say, okay, if you want, I don't know how we can do that. We can provide a stamp saying, this person A knows about Wikipedia, trusts our values, share our values, and for the, last, for the next 12 months, he can teach, and we know that he's OK. And we can do the same for companies. Companies can have like a charter to sign and say, hey, we are doing that, 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 and that. And if they don't respect that, I mean, at some point, it's bad press for them, because you can attack them with that. Um, so mostly that two things we can, we can do. And then I go back to the, the problem of values that uh, between a cultural organization that are aligned with us and companies are not. Um, first question is why do we care? 
I mean, I'm here to foster and promote free knowledge. And if free knowledge is held uh, in a bank or in uh, telco companies, and if I don't go to them to uh, get it back to Wikimedia and it's lost, I will get there. And I'm going to use a really simple uh, example. French Telecom, which about around half a world, was uh, is the company that uh, deployed a telephone in France. They documented that. They have a lot of archives. They made one session of museum about that, and they have a lot of archives uh, about that. It's right now, it's dusting, it's taking dust in the basement of Orange. If we don't do anything, we are killing free knowledge. We are losing the, the chance to document our telephone was actually deployed in France or in, in Germany or in UK. And it goes the same with all big old companies. If you go to IBM, I cannot imagine the archives IBM have. Or even a close company, I mean Louis Vuitton, which is a Lux company, they have an internal wiki, which is an encyclopedia of the craftsmanship of Louis Vuitton since the very beginning. And they can share that with Wikipedia. Because they cannot enter into partnership with us. This is a great example because their article is not very developed. What? It, it is a great example because their article is not very developed. Yeah. So, that is the issue. I mean, it's one. So, I don't know if you want to reconvene here for lunch or not, or if you have more questions, or we can keep talking on me. Yeah, it was the quick framework. I mean, I kind of developed that in like two minutes. So, I said it's just mostly building relationship of trust between them and us. So, providing them uh, a way to enter into Wikipedia, so it would be a central hub uh, where they can get basic information. Uh, basic rules regarding companies and access to contacts that can help them, which they don't have right now. And then, on the other hand, it would be to ask them to sign up some charter so we can strike back if they do something wrong. That's great. That would be great to hear you present it sometime later. I won't have time. I have to. I have meetings. I'm sorry, but I, share, I I'm right. I put that on media. I mean, I wrote the document about that. I can put that on media and share it as broadly as I can. Yes. So who would be, I like your idea about giving stamps possibly to, to yes. companies. Who would be giving the stamps? To that is a big question. I mean, uh, I've worked, <coughs> oh, okay, I've tried to work on that, and I see many possibilities. And the thing, the one that scales the best, would be Wikimedia organizations at large. Uh, meaning, like, for France would be France, for UK would be UK, etc. And the, the thing that is interesting in that, is uh, to get that step, it's like any label you get uh, for I know, uh, ecological label. Uh, at some point you have to give back some of the money you make. So we could do that too. We could say, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna see that you share our values, that you really nailed the, 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 the projects and how you read it. And in exchange, you can give us like 5% of the money you make. And it's interesting because this was diversifying our, our incomes. Right now, we rely only on donations. That's the But I'm not sure it's the best model because that means we made all the Wikimedia organization with that, and I'm not sure it's the best way to go, but it could be. Any other? Yeah, Sandra. Hi. Hi. Uh, I'm Sandra. I work for Wikimedia Netherlands. Before I joined Wikimedia Netherlands, I used to work for environmental organizations, so this whole issue of working with companies is. Um, uh, I've seen this discussion before for environmental organizations, it is just a big an issue. Um, one suggestion I would give, if your chapter or is seriously considering some sort of training for big companies, or cooperating with big companies, also contact your local uh, departments of Amnesty International, Transparency International, and Greenpeace, and offer to train some of their representatives as well. That will be your built-in quality yeah. control. Yeah, that's why I talk about third parties more. I mean, I, I prefer to talk about third party organizations than companies because this issue is the same for big NGOs too. Yeah. And for, uh, and we even had uh, some discussion, not discussions, but uh, we saw there was an issue with the, uh, it was the French or the Swiss uh, Rugby Federation, I guess. I, I don't remember which one it was. That all the logos of the clubs were not the good ones and were on Wikipedia. And they tried to fix that, and they got reverted because they were the official federation. So, and it's sport. I mean, we, sh we talk about the left, okay. But uh, you talk about the uh, values not being aligned. It's sports, I and mean, it's nothing great, but still. Any other questions, or you are really angry and I'm boring you? I have one question. Yeah. Uh, 
question. So sure. if it's not going to be the chapters, because I feel like that's going to be really difficult, what about people just giving their own stamps, like the individual, like you know, maybe us making one sort of stamp that we all agree to a certain standard? Sure. Do you think that the grass... Sure. Uh, sort of that, that could be, I mean, the only issue with grassroots is that you need to get all people around the table to agree on something. Uh, another way to do that, I mean, this would be extreme, would be to set up a company about that. That could work, but still, you have a, we have an issue, there is one issue, and that's why I'm making these talks, and that's why I'm going to put a media of information I'm going to try to push for a while, is that for years we have been avoiding this discussion. We have our heads in the sand. We are like blinding our eyes and just saying, no, it's not going to happen. And, uh, and, and on top of that, we have Jimmy doing that. So it doesn't help at all. But we need to have this discussion because it's already happening under the hood. So it's better that we try to set up something that helps than trying not to fight it or not work with it. Anything else? You're angry? OK, so if you're interested in that, I mean, uh, I'm on Twitter, and um, I'm on the mailing list, and um, on Mia, and I'm around here. And just grab me and talk to me about that. It's interesting. Thank you. So yeah, lunch is being served in the logo square and the afternoon session so we have written lunch at two in the afternoon. See you then.